we come to be made new again in God's love for us. And so I, I think it's just so wonderful invitation. Then Father Pepe talked about what keeps us from receiving that message, the reality of that that brokenness, that sinfulness. And he says we want deeper. He said, keep going deeper, not just looking at rules and regulations, but look into your hearts and see what, what has brought you here. And never with condemnation, never with a sense that I'm a bad person. That's shame. That has nothing to do with a Christian heart. But with a, an honest and, and graceful guilt in the sense that, yeah, I made a mistake. I made a sense that there's brokenness about me that I didn't contain, transform. So I'll accept that and I, I will make those right choices now with God's grace and God's help. That's that's grace at work. That's in our hearts. But shame, shame is that saying, not only did I make a bad choice, but I'm a bad person. God can't forgive me. I'm the one that grace never changed. That's the devil's works. The devil's voice inside of our hearts. I heard Father Father uh, Tetel, I, wonder, I have a wonderful grace every morning of sharing breakfast with Father Joe Tetel. And he said, yeah, in Lent, well, you know, he said, remember that you were made of dust, but that's stardust, that's stardust. God loving us. He wants to bring us back into a, a, a new creation. But I think that's, that's the way we have to approach this season of Lent. God wants to make stars as bright as the heavens and even beyond out of who we are because he loves us as we've heard over and over give up complaining focus on gratitude give up pessimism focus on being an optimist give up harsh judgments give up worry give up bitterness give up hatred give up negativism give up anger give up pettiness give up gloom give up jealousy give up gossiping Give up sin. Give up giving up. Just hang in there and walk in God's love. I think that's what led to that. If we focus on giving up, you know, it's going to make me a, you know, a tougher person. Uh, not so much. We want to take this chance, as we said, less about growing. We want to give into God's love for us. God's healing grace in our lives. Uh, I was tasked with talking about God's mercy. We did for you now, but it's a story of He's just healing the Jerusalem demonic. Because this is mercy at work. This is mercy breaking through. And it's, I think it may be worth your while sometime today or maybe you know, a little bit later. In the beginning of this Lenten journey, just read through this passage and recognize what a story of God's mercy it's all about. You know, God healing the, the poor man who had been besieged by, by a, a legion of devils that had entrapped him and made him mutilate himself, cry out in agony, and, and even chains couldn't hold back the terrors that had befallen him. But they couldn't hold Jesus back. Right? You see, the story is an amazing story of Jesus insistent, as, as Father Ivo, I think, he said it over and over again. He said, this unclean spirit come out of the man, unclean spirit come out of this man. He was not going to get in to the devil. I think that's true for us. That's that's what God's mercy is all about. It's not about us earning God's grace. You know, sometimes we think of like, well, if I do all this last thing and give alms and if I be yeah. kind to these people, even yeah. though I really want to, that well, that will bend God's arm and He can and He'll love me. And we got it backwards. God already loves us. He loves us completely and unconditionally. And we do these things to live in that. Life. We want to merit God's forgiveness. Uh, I don't think so. That God's already forgiven us. You know, there's that wonderful story of, of creation. Uh, you know, where God makes the heavens and the earth, and on the final day, he makes man. And it, it says in the, in the first chapter of Genesis that when he made man and woman, he said, this is very good. All the rest of the time, when he looked over creation, he said, this is good. And the stars, the animals, the land, the seas, the, the moon, the, the waters, the, the sky, this is good. But man and woman, this is very good. Our sinfulness is just an invitation to God to draw closer to us, or invite us, really, Draw closer to him. God has someone he can forgive, that he wants to forgive. He can't help but forgive, in a sense. The only thing that stops it is us. I think the story of the Jerusalem demoniac is a wonderful opportunity to see how Jesus lived that healing grace. How he wants to share that with all of our own brokenness, whatever that brokenness is. We all have it. We all have trusts. We all have, you know, in, in, internal struggles, and we all have histories in the past, and we all have ways in which the devil wants to convince us that we're not worthy of God's love, that we're the one that grace will never change. That's the devil's rhetoric. We've got to recognize that for what it is. Recognize that this season of Lent is the chance to give up that giving up 
I give up that sense that I have to earn God's love and give in to God's amazing grace. Live from hate, live forgiveness, live mercy, live reverence for all of life. I'm privileged to have individual conversations with people here in Montreal. There's that sense of it's just too much. It's been going on too long. They always have the same sin. I keep going back to investing with the same sin over and over again. God must be disappointed with me. It's the devil right there. God's got to be disappointed with you, discouraging us. Ignatius calls the devil, among other things, the enemy of our human nation. Whose voice that is? We can identify that for you. Back to that Gerasene demoniac. What's the first thing Jesus does? He gets the name of the devil. He says, what's your name? And the devil says, my name is Peter. There are many of us. But once he gets his name, he has power over the devil. And the same is true for us. If we can name that brokenness, those demons, those darknesses inside, we can name them to the Lord. That's the beginning of our victory. Because then Jesus has that opening to bring his grace, to bring us to healing. The devil thrives in darkness and in denial. We name the ways in which we need God's love. This Lent, we draw near to the Lord. He will transform us, as Father Bo said. He will transform us by his grace. If it reads like an addiction, if it reads like a disease, he's the one who frees the prisoner. He's the healer of all things. Jesus is talking to us. And he's telling us, I'm in your story. I'm in your story. So never lose track of that. Never feel like it's up to you. Do the controls to create your own salvation history. I got this. I got this. But I think one wonderful way to spend when this is every day. So this one or maybe even two graces or gifts that God has given me. Write them down. God has given me these people. God has given me my husband, my wife. God has given me this career. God has given me these talents. Recognize, write them down. And at the end of that, you'll have 40 or 80 reasons to thank God. That's going to draw you closer to God. That's what Lent's all about. That's the new life that God wants to form in our soul.